Okay, I was going to get lost on that example. Uh, it's not an easy thing to explain, but I'm going to try to focus and and stay on um, the main the main uh, this the center of this of this. Okay. Um, So going back to the example of the stream with the tree and the and the deer next to it, um, the competition occurs to find out the reason for which the tree is leaning against the a com in in, in, in uh, not a competition. Okay, wait, I, I said that wrongly. In a without people realizing, as a group, they start competing to uh, not 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 consciously competing but uh, the passion for finding the truth becomes exalted and somewhat competitive as you see other people propose the, uh, propose an explanation for 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 the phenomenon and so that kind of competition it's not a natural competition in the definition of the word as we know it in sports and so forth it's it's just an added factor in us uh, in motivating us to more um, more strongly produce the explanation for why the tree is leaning towards the, the the river not leaning towards the river and in that uh, of course there is an aspect there is a time i mean when when people they hear what everybody is proposing in the group and people realize um, that somebody or one of the explanations is probably the one or it's, it makes the most sense the more sensible it is the more if it's actually on the nail it uh, people will immediately want to accept that except there are two factors that are playing in our, our arriving to the truth or the, the the correct explanation for why the the river is leaning no, the tree is not leaning over to towards the river one factor is the um, the, the sort of uh, jealous jealous guarding of our uh, of our um, capacity for righteousness our our um, our, our pride in our own invention in our own production and so the there's a little bit of com the competition this kind of comp this sort of competition is um, affected by that by saying you know feel natural human emotional feelings where you, you thought you know you're making progress and finding out the reason and then somebody else just quickly said it and everybody went with that because it was obvious that that was the reason and you kind of have a harder time yielding and chucking your own uh, chucking away your own uh, train of thought to go with what the other person produced which is as a solution as a as an explanation because it's natural and the other force is um, that is, is this big sort of void sort of you can imagine a bowl dipping uh, in into the circle of people um, being the time distance factor in other words what gets filled in with our uh, settling with whatever explanation answers our question just because it's more important to have an answer than to be left without knowing what the reason or the explanation explanation for that is so these two things um, have us basically result in sides and we cap off or we uh, uh, sort of it's sort of like the the profile the end profile of of our behavior and our our uh, physical manifestation of intelligence we take sides on arguments and we on on things that we want to know actually things that we want to have an answer for on the truths that we are pursuing and we even forget that what we were doing was uh, pursuing a truth. What we think is reality is the existence of several sides on on an issue. And ha making a, a polar 
situation of that. It's perhaps the worst thing we can do because it, it starts bound, it becomes a thing of, uh, of like two ankles being tied together and you can't really walk gracefully. It's always bouncing off the extreme that the other one got to and then that sounds an alarm and, and the left starts going. It's so ridiculous you can see they're not, they're not thinking that they went too far towards the right. They're thinking that because they are the right side, um, they're, the nature of their thinking is wrong, so the left starts winning points because they're less absurd, and then they start going too far to the left, and they start making the same mistake. And so we, um, we become locked into, um, into a tit... Uh, a, sort of a, a paddle, a paddle, um, paddle game of uh, right and left, Democrat, uh, Republican, um, abortion, not abortion, gay, not gay, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, and we never come out of it. We basically kind of don't really make that much progress. Or if we do, it's not a progress that walks along the line of truth. So... The first thing that we we should we would want to do is to realize that we were both motivated by finding the truth about something. And the truth about a social political argument, a civil cause has to do with understanding our mind, our psychology, the human species, how we think and why we behave the way we do. Uh, government or political philosophies, let's say, um, basically ought to attempt to be as true to the human mind and how we are collectively and socially as a species if they want to, if we want to avoid arguments. Because whatever doesn't adhere to our natural form, um, the way nature made our mind and our psychology interact collectively and socially uh, will always cause, um, produce uh, some that will say, well, that doesn't feel right, that's not right. There will always be some that say, that doesn't work for me, that doesn't seem true to the species. Now, that may always happen, but if you're actually uh, of the wisdom and knowledge on your on, on the thinking about the, the issue of the matter, true to nature and to the uh, species and our psychology and our, our society and our social collective as the species works, the people that feel um, that's not, that doesn't seem right to me or doesn't feel right will probably more likely be because of their own capacity to not understand. Um, there will be more a greater proportion of people who, uh, who who aren't comfortable, not because they see something that is true that is being omitted and avoid and uh, omitted and uh, missed by current beliefs, like it happens today, where people argue and fight mainly because they're intuitively righteous. They 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 see the the faults and the flaws of of how uh, some believe in in in, the, in 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 institutions or in government or in popular social discourses, and they react because they feel very strongly a truth. And truth is always, as I said, um, stands on on the natural design of the species. So if they intuitively feel passionate anger, rejection. Uh, a need to change, a need to protest, it is probably because, um, you know, they are, they are true and, and, and feeling that part which uh, the status quo of, of, of social and political thought is missing altogether and hasn't taken into consideration. So the day that we do have an intelligence as um, and, and a sort of a, a governmental administrative and institutional intelligence that professes things that are truly for the, uh, would be for the first time in history, uh, majoritively 
based on the actual design of how we are as a species, the truth about human nature and what makes us tick and what truly is hurtful in the collective sense and, and, and in the long run, uh, then we will, uh, you know, always have people that uh, also don't feel right about whatever, don't want to agree or uh, argue it, uh, but they will be, they will indicate something else. They will indicate more about problems. It almost sounds a little Orwellian, I realize. But um, this is, I made these vid these two videos basically uh, in taking off on uh, something I saw um, one of the guys, let me see the title because I, I don't want to miss the title of this uh, video that I Oh, press for truth uh, on fear uh, fear mongering about immigration and Trudeau uh, saying some stuff and then I see Lauren Sutherland which I I think is great because she has the, the courage uh, and the balls to uh, the, <laughs> the ovaries would say my friend <laughs> my friend would say <laughs> she has the ovaries to um, uh, face the, uh, the the things that people are too too whip, wussy or wimpy to because I believe we feel intuitively things when they're wrong but we have to go against uh, so many different aspects of social communication and, and popular um, and general belief general popular thinking and so uh, in any case, so this video talks about immigration, and immediately I thought because I made, I made, I had an idea, a concept that I uh, started a little Facebook group with, um, and they all, all my um, sort of activist subjects that I tackle, all are built on the same principle that the the truth that needs to be elaborated and educated as every, the whole everyone is educated the world is education we we learn from watching from seeing from hearing from actually going to school to study intentionally but when when we say education and this is used uh, should be probably used uh, more often you know what we grow up learning to think um, uh, what we probably need to be better educated on is that um, immigration, and this is funny because I really believe that uh, Lauren's point is the more important point to be made now, uh, because we went to where there is no definition. We went all the way to the other place. However, Immigration is still a natural, and there's another, a world of truth, or another guy that, that would say exactly the opposite of this. Um, it is a human right to move, to leave a place where we don't want to live in anymore. It, it's just uh, more innately primitive and truer to our being, to our species rather, than the creation of nations. We we have always uh, uh, made good on the, the 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 feeling the freedom to just maybe go live with people who speak another language, and we've accepted that maybe we're the last um, the last the last popcorn in the bag, as another friend used to say, like the least important people, and we uh, because we're less understood and we're seen as different. But we accept that because we really understood that it was more important for us to change. We really wanted to make it, do it for our children because we knew our children would grow up speaking the language and they wouldn't have that problem anymore. It is a human right. What the, the, the problem of immigration needs to find its center, like I was explaining. What actually creates the problems of immigration, and this is where more right-wing people would start agreeing with me perhaps is that there is a time and a ratio of absorption you uh, for institutions communication is everything and what really makes a country happy 
uh, I'm thinking of countries in Europe before they were mass immigrated and how much, how little they needed formality. It seemed that they all knew each other in the cities and their towns and um, they shared things without necessarily having long-term relationships. Um, they lived so close together and um, that it, it taught me that it, 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 the, uh, the ability to create society and civilization is innately human without the need of institution and government. In other words, government is a tool that comes in later because we become so populated that, again, time and distance don't allow for things to get copacetically homo homogenized in a, in a given group. And so we need to just write it down. We may need to put it on a record. You know, at 9 o'clock is when everybody goes farming, let's say, because then, then the person who distributes water can drive by all the farms at, at once. And this happens because we become so numerous. Otherwise, we're actually, we can do it without uh, government. And so you see, at we, as we talk about these things, you visit all these issues where currently there exists um, bi bipolar arguments like anarchy or against government, you know, and all this. No, government is a good thing that, that naturally arises um, because we see we have the ability to write and to um, leave down, you know, write down in stone things that we can later pass a little stone tablet to another person and they go, oh, okay, so this is how you do it. Oh, look, we don't have to worry how to figure this out. They already got the system figured out. We save a lot of time. It's useful. Um, but what happens is when you introduce people into society that has a, a, a strong uh, volume of its daily existence thriving through uh, the natural means by which to communicate where uh, system order administration really assists but it's more rarely referred at uh, referred to because we're living more in the in the natural the, the sort of the living part the organic part of the species there's a recorded part that we carry with us, and then there's the living part that also travels. It's part of the same. In another video, I talk about that. Um, and so, all of a sudden, the collective gets infused with fresh humanity that does not has not learned the language, does not understand our customs, and that wouldn't be so bad because we naturally are empathetic and we uh, want to know people and they want to be accepted and included and so they want to be known and they want to know us. The problem is in the systems of administrating that country is where the problems start coming in because uh, what explains our administrative written reality, our administrative systems, for example, our laws, is that we can interpret them as we were the creators of them, we can work with them. We say, okay, we consider really bad that somebody steals, for example. Um, another person from, and so the law is sustained and, you know, we find them $200 because they stole an apple and everybody's happy with that law and it works well for us. When people from another country come, they will, you know, uh, in our country, um, if you're hungry, you take the food and then you, f you find a time. And we, we consider it very rude if you let more than a week go by without coming back to the stand and saying, I had to take your apple, here's the money. And so I was really just in a need where my kids were, were bugging me and they were hungry. We're not going to be home until later that evening. And uh, we picked up some apples and... Uh, that's just how we, I am in my country, I didn't mean to, I didn't know that this law existed. So it creates um, this, this kind of disruption, and this is a very simple example. You have to then expand, extend this into 
um, psychological validation, for example, feeling that you are um, understood and you can appreciate it. And, you know, well, for example, in Italy, I see a lot of um, guys that come from Sudan, Africa, and they, they speak Italian really badly. And it seems that the ones that succeed are the tenacious ones. The ones that I see at City Hall trying to get their first residency uh, or rental, whatever, paperwork and stuff, they are, uh, they almost get pissed off that they have to struggle and I can see, like, the Italian officers at the police station, they kind of, you know, mock, they don't overtly, I, I'm kind of like, I can see through the, the gestures that they're actually condescendingly uh, treating them with, uh, with whatever prejudices they may be concocting in their head. And so the, the immigrant has, has to put up with all this, and that this fires up. And so what happens? Assimilation has a ratio, has an amount that can be, um, that it can take before it starts. All you have to do is think about America, and Canada, I think, um, where known for having mass, and, and you know, what did we have? Gangs, and which became part of how we were. We didn't think anything of it. You know, everybody has a gun, and they're all, they're all killing each other, you know. But in reality, it's a result of, um, you know, and some people, we don't want to know, we wouldn't want a, a world, somebody's probably criticizing a picket fence of, you know, what do you call it, Pleasantville kind of a world. No, of course not. That's just a, a ridiculous image of, of Hollywood. Um, but the normal state of the of human of of a human being, and this has always been for our the greater part of our civilization's evolutionary time, not our biological evolutionary time, but the evolutionary time of our recent civilization, at the end of our evolutionary period, most of our time, you know, entire millions and millions of lives have been spent in a single language. You know, very few travelers, a big deal that somebody came back from a long journey. In reality, everybody was born and died speaking their language among their people. So our actual normal state is where we flourish, in other words, where we're more, where we thrive and, pr and are more comfortable to heal whatever problems we may have, psychological problems from our parents and whatever no other norm normalcies occur in a society, we find a much more comfortable environment to work them out. What you have, for example, in Los Angeles is that somebody, not only do they have maybe, a, a, you know, ang bad parents that, you know, raised them up with a lack of love and violence and what have you, or problems that ignored their children, they grew up with prob with problems, and then they go into society, it looks at them as, as, a, as a Mexican gangster and they, you know it's like they can't they can't find peace so we should feel rightly so for one thing compassion for the situation that we put immigrants in by bringing them into our country by allowing them not bringing them but opening the door and saying come in we should be accountable we should you know we invited it's like when you invite somebody to your home you make sure that they have a blanket and a pillow and they know how to use the bathroom the the shower and da 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 da. Well, we should be the same way, and that means that there would be uh, criteria, which of course exist already, but we just kind of very loosely had them before. We never talked about them, talked about the reasons for these criteria in a rich manner, where we really gave importance to people integrating. We were okay with people making their ghettos, and you know we didn't understand how. Because we never established that immigration is a right and is natural, but it's also a reality that we have engineered countries and systems of administration and uh, things that make uh, immigration, excessive immigration, create problems. This should be the same for all countries. What this means is that we could feasibly have um, open borders believe it or not, we could have, uh, you know, what I, the best wall is a non-wall is what I like to say. What this means is that if we actually think of the human experience, um, 
we would de in, um, design ways in which people find it comfortable to immigrate because all we really need is for pe is for people to be um, n not identified but um, lo localized no uh, that we can we can know what people are doing in other words I can't believe I, I can't I can't think of the word in English for this um, that people are findable <laughs> no I guess I'm I'm thinking there's a word for it in Spanish so I I, I, I'm like stubborn thinking that there's got to be a word in English, but I think the whole phrase would have worked out differently in English. Um, I, I wanted to say accountable, but that's not what what it is. What we need is for people is for people to uh, have a place that we know what they where they are, what they're doing, and then we can order organize the country accordingly. Not having uh, a border, we can't have things halfway. If you have things halfway. Problem, the problem that still lingers, you know, will still be large, will still exist in a big way, and um, you have to completely, to in order to understand a, a, such a different concept, you have to understand what human behavior would be like if you removed the border. What you would have is people who want to immigrate. We know that the caravans are, are like full of people, maybe half, maybe a third, at least a third of people that really just took advantage of the situation to come to America, <laughs> you know, not because they were running away, not because they couldn't handle where they were living or they couldn't make their lives better where they were if they really tried to, if they, you know, uh, not because the possibility for their lives being better did not exist where they were, but, okay, so this is something that for some reason we don't want to face. Um, so um, what I'm getting at is that that the person um, that leaves their family behind leaves their family behind. Already what we should care more about is that families stay together. Not just when they're here, but when they leave. That they, we don't have isolated people Parents that come here and leave their kids behind. You know, we should the the family unit traveling together is what we would want for an optimal uh, health health healthy form of of uh, of immigrating for the humans for a human family, and also it works out. It works out in the concept of a non-border because when you don't punish somebody for staying too long or 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 getting any legally they can they can re they can think over the situation and they can say well it wasn't as easy as i thought let's go back plan it out correctly and come again or if they do separate their family let's say that the father just comes if we have a visa that says you as if you left your family behind you can only stay four months uh, we strongly encourage, this is something I'm, uh, I really believe in about the law, we shouldn't punish or put walls in the law, we should guide people, give them ways of, of handling themselves, of saying, you know, making it a little more difficult, making it more complicated, making it where they don't have so many privileges, but um, Giving people the uh, the ability to administrate their lives within the within parameters, I think this is the way uh, law works best. Of course, it requires more intelligence, but aren't we talking about raising the quality of uh, of civilization after all? Um, and so that way, there's there won't be a situation where once they're inside, they're afraid to leave and they stay stuck in idle lives where they miss their families, but they don't want to go back because they then they, they might get caught going out or going back in again. And at the same time, if you make it, if people are no longer afraid, they don't live in the shadows, as um, as Kamala Harris said the other day. Um, then they. Um, they, they, and you just make it attractive to them. You make it functional towards what they're trying to achieve, which is an improvement in their lives. 
that all their children are registered and they you create different levels of visa like visitor where you're just trying out to see if how it goes you know and then if you want to work then uh, you know not make it difficult you know not make it nobody wants to give you a contract a, a work contract these days and the world is just designed so badly everywhere is have every place I go has the same problem people want to hire you uh, part-time not not so many hours because that way it's less taxing on them you know we're really people lie and you know the law just doesn't really take into consideration how human beings really are uh, but without getting into that whole um, thing is that um, maybe you have levels of activity and participation and then you make it easy for people well if you want to be able to have for for example credit in a bank right now nothing is ordered you know you can come in and then all of a sudden you take out a loan if you they check your credit is okay and turns out you never had a you know you don't have any minus points on your credit you know somebody that just came in and their family is still in Guatemala but they managed to you know in a year they they take out a ten thousand dollar loan you know and nothing is um, synchronized with um, an overall holistic understanding of, of uh, a social civilization. Uh, so if you have these different levels of immigration, not only the country can then see what's going on and they can uh, uh, organize it accordingly, uh, but it would be more, it'd be easier to control a little bit. If we want to control the amount of people that come in, we would work on uh, accelerating or augmenting the the quality of integration which is requiring people to do more um, you know social act I don't know social act involvement and le taking language taking history classes I don't know whatever it takes to uh, a more humanly creative way of involving people so that the uh, integration is uh, is is you know, increase with that's what we would want. For ratio to increase, we would want integration to be faster, although it probably has its limit. It probably has just as, you know, there's, depending on what country and how people are to one another, you know, if uh, there are countries where people, tourists can say this, you know, they went, they ended up staying three months in Greece and they all adopted me and I had to, you know, they all treated me like I was family. You know, if we were, all of us were like that to all our immigrants the ratio could go up <laughs> but if we um, create invisible divisions invisible segregations that are not apparent but then they only appear in the end as ghettos and different uh, um, demographic conditions at work and somehow how did that occur you know we're, we're friendly to everybody but ultimately they ended up divided segregated demographically by where they live and where they work and what kinds of jobs they have so we're not really all that welcoming are we where in, um, maybe another culture would be truly um, uh, understanding of other people's condition and so if the only person the only problem uh, somebody has is learning the language and everything else you're fine with then that would be something that you could take care of and tackle and and welcome the person into your job place and just make sure you know why hide it you know we need you to learn English faster <laughs> you know if you want to be a waiter next year you got to learn um, you, we don't talk about things uh, uh, this is very typical of Americans we 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 are we we keep inside the stuff that uh, we were like you have to be politically correct I guess that's the only term that comes to mind right now about how we treat people and we don't really express what might be a true or more spontaneous more natural reactive feeling towards people more spontaneous uh, gut filled instant um, thought about somebody we don't even see it ourselves I think we're so bad that way um, so an open border could work if if we really make it orderly and that would also mean that we need to involve 
neighboring countries. You know, it's not something that we could... If we did it alone, it would be a lot more difficult than if we um, coordinate it with other countries. And, uh, and really, coordinating with other countries is the best thing that you would want if, if you want to, for example, keep people that have problems, that have done bad things in society in their other country, and you don't want them... You know, we can't ask for a report just that all that easily. I don't know what the actual um, workings of that. I think some with, between some countries, but generally speaking, I know that you can find out a person's legal record in another country just like that. There has to be a major reason for it, so we don't know who's coming in, and, and so we would also have to. So bo open board. It's not the point that I'm uh, trying to make is that it's not an issue of. Uh, immigrating or not immigrating, letting immigrants in or not letting them in, wall or no wall, it's that will just keep us locked into this constant. We have to talk about how the human being is, how the human species is, how we interact, what we need socially, what we what makes us what gives us a healthy living social human environment for us to feel comfortable and thus sincere. It's important that ultimately we create uh, civil and social environments that um, that foster and inspire people to be sincere. Because if they don't fear, uh, then they're more <laughs> more prone to being sincere, right? <laughs> um, our problem, I think, is that there's always the cynic that says, "Yeah, but you know, you do that, you're too good to somebody, and then there's always going to be somebody that robs you." Or there's always somebody who wants to hurt you. Well, you know, uh, that's not the point. Looking at that uh, does not help, and it it it, it's, it doesn't take from the ultimate better result. I mean, just because there will always be somebody that will uh, that is too shy to register themselves, and they walk in and they just take a sort of a, the easy visitor's visa, and then they because they didn't want to do the paperwork or they didn't want to bring with them whatever they required to get the better visa, which is to the trying out the country six months visa, and they end up lying in a system that is totally harmless and benevolent, you're always going to have people like that. But that doesn't mean that the overall working and the majority of the people will not be using will be better. In other words, the, the ultimate working ultimate working of the system will not be better and that the greater number of people will not be better benefiting and the country will not be functioning uh, by being aware of everybody that's coming in better just because you have the usual person that will just not you know it's not natural to to have to impose ultimately the human being wants to be a hundred percent free. We don't like it when anybody tells us to do anything. We only like it when we want them to tell us something because it's, we want to learn. We uh, maybe there's aspects that make us feel safe. That comes from paternity, you know, from uh, a strong a leader or a parent or um, a friend you admire or a, a professional mentor. Make gives you security when they they gracefully and know how to say how to tell you what to do uh or in other words take orders right as they as, as it's as it's called in the in the in the work uh labor environment <laughs> but uh in reality uh as as a given we don't like to be told so this is one of the primary um conditions of intelligence because we need to be free to explore always all the time so that we can find things that we want to answer so that we can continue evolving and so telling us what to do kind of rightly so goes against our sense of freedom and it only feels free when we want to be told what to do so right off the bat um, um, our aim would be to try to have a world where we tell the other what to do as least as possible and we have less rules that we have to obey because of 
rules that exist are more like guidelines that conform to what we would want anyways and that's what we need to approach as best as possible as administrated or uh, organized societies or countries is a, a, an intelligence in government and administrative institutions that most as perfectly as they can understand human behavior and loosely kind of make it easy for us to just feel free and resort to guidance or um, system or uh, rules when we need them, when we want to, when sometimes you want to tell somebody else who wants to do something with you, wants to get involved with what you're doing, and you tell them, well, just, you know, just look up how it's written in the book. Look up the rules. Look up how this other person did it. Look up the guidelines. Check out the parameters, right? So we may want to resort to the law, but if the law would be more educational and understanding, empathetic of how things are, how things unfold for the human species, they would be much more uh, appreciated and respected than seeing them as cages, as things that we have to stay within. And that's what causes the problems, the punishment. Punishment, judgments, walls, um, is what actually has the world nervous and and unsure all the time because we feel um, um, not inadequate or helpless but like idiots we feel like we, we it takes away from the natural ability to become stronger to be stronger if you have it's like a tree that instead of growing in the wind and learning with it with the forest how to strong, uh, slowly make strong limbs and a strong trunk you put a stick to it and you tie it and you know gardeners know this you have to be careful because if you if you um, let it grow too much on that stick and one day you just take it out a wind comes will just snap it because it never grew strength in its trunk so the law and a judicial system should be the same way um, and this is what I'm saying about immigration we should understand our social condition, our social psychology. We should try to recover people. We should try because wanting to, you know, harming and killing and destroying is not the prime directive of evolution and creation or the human mind ultimately. We want to live, thrive, and that includes being included with others, being accepted and accepting others, wanting others to thrive is also part of our mind as much as others wanting to see us to thrive. It's the collective will is the first prime directive of all. You know, the collective first things of the collective surviving. Within the collective surviving and thriving it is built into each individual to uh, like, a, like a little uh, sperm cell uh, fighting, you know, to be the first one. It would seem that the individual is selfishly more important than the collective, but in reality, inside each individual is a desire for the collective to succeed before himself. But it would not succeed, the collective, above everything, if there wasn't built in into every individual that strong, sharp desire to be the victor, to be the one that pushes forward. And then you add all those individuals and you, you have a, col a, collect a triumphant collective. That's how the species advances, not by either or, although first by the collective and then by indi the individual, although it would seem the individual is stronger than the collective. It's sort of a, a paradigm kind of uh, spatial understanding, right? And so, um, oh, I forgot why I needed to make reference to that, but I think I covered all of this and uh, all of what I basically, what the concept I believe about immigration needs to be like. Uh, it seems that it wouldn't be so applicable right now, immediately. <laughs> um, but why not, actually? You know, it all, all you need is a, a handful of really intelligent leaders in government to change and be radically. You know, the problem is that some of the radicals today are starting to sound too much like a discombobulated left. 
and they just want to say these beautiful, you know, the truth is not idealisms. Idealisms are um, just things that, phrases that make us understand human concepts. Um, but the truth actually is not an idealism. The truth is a truth about the species, about how we are, what we need, how we actually perform, how we function, what we do, why our behavior is the way it is. That is where the truth is. Ultimately, that's what we're always striving for in our relationship with the natural world, with the planet. So, understanding how we are, the, in, the collective intelligence of how the species is, in relationship with what we are, what our predicament is to this world, this biological world of gravity and and uh, and uh, invasive viruses and diseases and and other forces that uh, that uh, attack our body. <laughs> you know that our our prime directive should be health because health is the confrontation of what our body is in all its holistic entirety and its relationship with the environment um, even the stuff that we are prone to genetically or what have you is still very much about the relationship with the environment because now the environment is our inventions of the hospital and back in medicine and and and, uh, and our health um, science and so, you know, it always is about the relationship with, with Gaia or the, the natural world. So I, the left, the radical progressive lefts that are now reacting, no, I'm sorry, I was thinking about the other way around. The right, thank goodness, is reacting to some of the extreme lefts. But um, because the right got it really wrong, <laughs> and just instead of... I don't know, they had nowhere else to, to, to try to box, nothing else to box into a concrete uh, space that now they, they went for money. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to read into the state that we're in right now and why President Trump... You know, President Trump is not actually um, as bad as people think he is. He is just a real person, and it's really ironic he has a big heart, actually. He's not. Uh, he's a little rough around the edges in a, in a sort of New York rich kind of way, um, and he's not, not very sophisticated um, in in, uh, in in understanding uh, the predicament of, of mankind and civilization. And so, but you know, I think he's totally misjudged, though. And this is our our this is our loss, because ironically. He's, he's somebody who would probably be more open to people talking to him than other politicians are. And we have demonized him as a representative of the right um, that must be shot down. It's, inc it's crazy. It's an unbelievable a whole network, a whole news network has been... Has been uh, mount has mounted itself to, as a as a as a corporate campaign of information against this man, and he's only getting worse because he's being attacked. It's not because he's demonstrating more who he really is. It's it's not. He's actually he, we actually had a person. If you think about things, you know what politician would have stopped the war, <laughs> you know, just like that, uh, without. Um, needing to avoid so much compromise and really hard dealing and half-assed kind of uh, negotiations that kind of brought everything to a screeching pause, you know. He just said, enough, you know, let's remove the troops. And as a result, um, the Taliban are now talking about ending the war in Afghanistan. And I think that we are so embarrassed deep inside that um, that he actually ha makes good moves, that he actually has does good things. 
that we don't want to admit it. We don't want to see it. We're blindly careening, and it's just easier to adhere to this mass pandemonium, this mass hysteria of attacking the man. It's so sad that we um, are exhibiting before the world so much collective ignorance and so little restraint and wisdom, um, so little tact and subtlety in addressing somebody that, you know, shouldn't be so hard to to talk. So we didn't get the, 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 the most uh, a mastermind uh, president. But what he does have, we're ignoring. We're, we're ignoring, he's very smart in what he knows how to do, obviously. Uh, he, uh, that's his strength. He, he's a he's a um, uh, negotiator, a corporate negotiator. He's doing performing g very good. Apparently, I don't understand much about it, but it seems that um, he's making some countries uncomfortable. If other countries are economically becoming uncomfortable, and he's he's um, drawing the uh, the gun. I was going to say he's uh, he's um, challenging them on things that were never done before that's, that makes them uncomfortable and changes the, the game. It must be that he's actually good at what he does. Uh, we ignore that. Uh, and we ignore the fact that if, for example, one thing, why it's so serious to me, why it's so sad is that if we knew how to talk to him, because he's just a, a guy that you see walking down Park Avenue, you know, on your way to work. He's, he's. This is, this is the great tragedy. If we only forgave him for his shortcomings and talked to him, refer, re, re, relating to his heart, to his, he's actually uh, very compassionate, very un. This is what we've been wanting. This is, we've been asking for somebody that wasn't a politician, and we finally get somebody who's not a politician, and we can't take advantage of the, of, of the fact that we could go up to him and say, Sir, there's just so many... This is crazy. We're incarcerating people. There, there is such a thing as recovery and rehabilitation. We need to transform the law. We, we do not want to have uh, this horrendous injustice and killing of people and uh, innocent people just because they, they, they talked back while they were being arrested. And it's crazy no other president would have been easier to approach on this issue than this man is. And we're just too busy trying to make him into a monster. It's that's what that's what's really the the, the horrible thing that we're going through right now. That we're hysterically enthralled in 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 the character that we wanted him to be, the evil right, you know? Um, I don't think he is that much. Um, you know, we went too far on a lot of things, and perhaps, um, and he's not even addressing them, which means we could take advantage of the opportunity that he would go in that direction, and 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 um, s present our um, present our points, and I don't want to say guide our president, although in a future world it would be interesting if if the people could guide their president, but, um, you know, on things that that would be his, the, uh, for example, on the homosexuality, gay, transgender thing, you know, uh, he's already on the right side of politics, or Republicans, or whatever you want to say, so, and the liberals are supposedly Democrats, so, um, and yet he he doesn't care to say, you know, marriages between a man and a woman and things like that that you would expect, uh, who was recently some politicians that started drumming that, that um, hitting that drum, it didn't go so well, but, um, you know, he doesn't want, and of course there's all these political considerations that they they know how things will rep, will result, they know how um, it will resonate, how things will, the repercussions that will cause to make certain statements, so he probably, he obviously expressed already he's not for it, he, uh, and wherever he can, he's kind of pulling back. The point is that the, era, the subject of homosexuality, homosexuality 
is part of the human species. It's part of human sexuality. It's again, it's not something that divides us and whether it should be civilly accepted or not civilly accepted. And it's certainly not something where some people are born to live homosexually and some people were born to not live homosexually. We invented that. That does not exist. And you can actually see these people. I love that guy that um, make proved me wrong. I forget his name. Also Canadian. Um, because he will just put those questions and it's... I can see by, by watching his shows how difficult it is to get people to see things that are simple, uh, simply wrong. <laughs> they can't seem to, uh, to grasp them. And, um, but, you know, if you find that the middle is right there, the middle is the fact that homosexual, because even that guy is, you know, both are learned in their ways, right and left. I'm sorry, I forget, I forget his name right now. Um, he goes to university campuses and, and puts a little booth and says, you know, prove me wrong. Great idea, great little concept. But I also saw that when somebody gave him the, some rope, you know, to see, see how he would have it be, it also seemed like um, he didn't acknowledge the, because we're too caught up with uh, what bisexuality means. Sexuality in itself does not understand genders the way we so almost neurotically have come to think about them, whether you're a man or a woman, you know. Um, but there is no ambiguity like the left would have it. It's not the same. There is order. And obviously the male is the leader, leader of the species. Hello. You know, there's... <laughs> we have found it so impossible to stay in the center and um, understand what homosexuality is. Um, and it basically is in human sexuality. Anybody, because there is, because sexuality is not necessarily about, it is about, okay, it's also, par it's also a paradigm, it is very much about two genders complementing. And the, there is only two genders, and together they make the single human being. Um, but in, inside our minds, sexuality re is more strongly governed by biological uh, feelings, chemistry of attraction. And so that makes it possible that if you stripped away everything that you grow up learning about the world, to be put naked with the same gender, you could very easily, you do very easily find pleasure and everything starts happening by itself, you know, just like sex. <laughs> and thus, homosexuality is experienceable, you can experience all the pleasure, but also this is a fascinating part of homosexuality. As uh, a phenomenon of human sexuality in itself, as its own thing within human sexuality, not separate or parallel, comparable at all, not. They're not two things. You don't have heterosexuality here and homosexuality over there. That is something, we ended up with that mess. It's not like that. Homosexuality is within a greater sphere. It's a, a thing that uh, where two forces fuse. And so, in the singular homosexual experience, you have the, un, you know, the undiscerning forces of sexuality, which, you know, make you end up wanting to copulate, basically, um, and have pleasure, and also something that is natural. Homophobia is not uh, a social hysteria or a, um, an air of behavior. Homophobia actually is sourced in the mind, when the behavior of homosexuality, there is something that starts sounding alarms in your brain. That makes all the sense in the world. It makes a sense, you know, uh, I'm not even a doctor, I, I have no studies in science, but I know that it's a scientific subject. And I know that if our uh, an, uh, an, um, biological science, human sciences, medicine and what have you would be right on spot on they would be very versed in this and would corroborate the right way what i'm saying <laughs> you know 
So thank goodness for the internet because people that are intelligent can just start speaking and talking their truth. And wouldn't you know that the truth happens to meet up with places where we our sciences have been very good about being true to the human body, to the, the our biological truth, um, our natural truth. So in any case, uh, so this explains this simul this fusion of two forces, repulsion, repulsion, attraction, which makes sense, right? Because it's on, there's only another gender. And so if you're attracted to the same gender, there's something in the mind that first attracts you because it's sexuality, it's so powerful, but at the same time it would repel you because the magnet has to be turned the other way. And when you're with a woman, it feels completely different. You know, whatever fear, uncomfortableness, or what have you, would probably mainly have to do with psychological or, or immaturity. But eventually, you, you, when you experience uh, sex as it is designed by nature to complement with you f you see a bunch of aspects that stimulate and enhance complementary aspects that add to something that you didn't have before um, and then there's comp there's also other aspects that you you sort of have to now share a bunch of stuff with the other person's will the other the woman the woman the woman's will uh, your will has to surrender a little bit, and so does hers, you know, because you fuse into sort of the complete human being. But there's also enhancement, you know, and that's why there are songs that say, I, uh, you make me feel like a man, and there's songs that make me, that women sing, you make me feel like a woman. That's where that comes from. Uh, and the homosexual experience doesn't have that. It is more to do with um, sort of a intimate, intimate, to intimate lives and more made more intimate is what I said made more intimate or fraternal fraternal sexuality so there's an intimacy intense intimacy with the same gender that has so the the quality the emotional psychological quality has more to do with two guys getting along and then all the selfishness that that might also entail um, but what am I getting at? Oh yeah, that the natural aversion would work. So that means that we understood homosexuality. Now, why it occurred, why, why it, um, I've only explained that it can, it can be experienced by anybody equally as pleasurable and um, mechanically, you know, with the same impulses and desires and so forth. Um, now, what we want to answer, apparently, in society is its occurrence. And homosexuality does occur to the species. It doesn't occur to the individual. And we probably started off wrong on this because it's been condemned on the individual um, since the beginning of, um, of time, you know, in the, in the books and scripture. And again, the, the situation where it's difficult for us collectively to stay focused on the singular human natural truth we create arguments just because of the limit of our intelligence and so we take positions and we we can't it's almost like if you can imagine your mind being a house with a really low ceiling um you know that the house is broad and it goes all the way to the other side but because the ceiling dips in some rooms along the way, even lower than the ceiling in your room, you can't see um, how high the entire roof is for the whole house. You have to go outside the house to see that. What you see is how high the ceiling is in, in the different rooms, kind of thing. So we've only been able to produce that in history. We've only been able to produce explanations that um, basically it, it condemns it because the aversion part the aversion uh, throughout history the the classical you know homo you know it's disgusting whatever is sort of the raw uneducated by society natural feeling in men that have not except now there is depending on the thinking you could there has always been people that are they don't feel it uh, because their intelligence is level is is um, more level perhaps 
but it's also different in its quality and so they understand sexuality uh, perhaps more intelligently and so they don't condemn uh, homosexuals as they were seen in history while others uh, reacted more from that place that half of half of it because even the person that that rejects with anger and aversion homosexuality kind of feels intuitively something that fascinates them or attracts them right and gay guys will be the first ones to tell you that right away um, so we have to understand the beast in, in its entire span in its uh, f uh, simultaneous uh, fused uh, two forces uh, that, uh, and, and if we understand that and we understand that later that its occurrence why is it that you find more men this is how it should be seen why does uh, do you see it happen in society where more men are interested in pursuing it while others less and that's what it comes down to um, perhaps most guys and, and most if not all will not would admit it when they were kids always had that little friend 11 9 12 you know where they just had to see what happened if you provoked sexuality in the other played games pee on each other sucked each other's um, sucked each other's off each other off or even did more um, and at that point I think any guy that would be honest about that would also recall how it felt when they they could almost measure it as they were going too far and this experimentation and the sensation of going too far is how it naturally is in all men because there is no actual separation all the way of two genders and sexuality it's um, sexualities forces biological forces are stronger so all men will try it now the difference is that uh, and then immediately we we kind of we, it's like we saw we saw what was on the other side of the door and it scared us and we and that is why we kind of don't want to talk about it again right or we're funny we kind of ruined the friendship that we had with that little boy when we were a kid because we both kind of were ashamed and all that stuff is valid we're trying to suppress it now but it's valid um, and um, on the other and then you have people who are more will go back or, or seem to find more satisfaction at the psychological level because it's the 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 the, the the uh, understanding and the interesting part of homosexuality is really psychological what happens in the minds of people if we weren't afraid of it if we hadn't created now two sides men would just be more honest about their narratives and we would understand it better we would understand homosexuality much better than we do we've never understood it completely uh, we were on the threshold of understanding it completely and then in 1972 with Christopher Street and, and uh, Stonewall we pushed it back down except instead of pushing it back down in the traditional sense where it was we pushed it back down into an accepting place where we said we don't want to understand it anymore just like before you either hate it and we don't want to understand we don't want to understand why they act that way well we did the same thing we pushed it down we don't want to understand that way what we're going to do is divide it into you're either born that way or you're not and right before that what that happened we were starting to talk about the psychological development the childhood the child child development aspect which is like a big chunk if not half or a third of why homosexuality occurs in society and so what we should look at is society as a the argument the discussion not the argument but the understanding of homosexuality should start on the collective why does it happen to a species why instead of having you know a, one person that for whatever const, uh, see we are all a combination of our of how we, our recipe came out how our chemistry works our brain was made in our mother's womb we're unique that way with that we will react differently to the influences of the world so it's not just psychologically 
it's not just biologically. We're a combination of how we're made and how we're, we, the proportions, let's just say, came out in our brain and how that will interact. You will have two boys that classically, before the unvalidating, um, disassociated, downputting dad, uh, will be feistier and say maybe more, uh, you know, let it slide off his back and, and look for another male in his childhood, like an uncle, recognize his love better and learn from him and not be psychologically affected by the Freudian quote unquote understanding of homosexual development. Then his brother, twin brother, who for whatever reason, his mind just kept going back to his dad that he had to make him love him. He couldn't accept his rejection, his absence, his disassociation, uh, his put-downs. And so because he kept trying to do that, um, and his parent didn't, his dad didn't see that he, he, his difference, how he was sensitive in a way that kept going back and asking him to, to treat him better. He never was able to read that, which is the majority of the cases. Uh, he, um, you know, then as he approached adolescence, started, spilled that over because something in him wasn't, stopped developing and maturing. A part of his psyche, of his personal sense of self, stopped. And so he started looking for uh, relation, validation, and love with uh, males. And as you pass adolescence, that instead of becoming from platonic it starts going more towards intimate and more intensely one-on-one -on -one. and so depending on how we come but so it, understanding that then you can look at, co at the collective and you see well we have now it seems that out of a hundred people we have uh, 20 people that are really into going back to homosexual experiences you know uh, we don't think this way today. Today we think you are or you're not gay. We have split society, which is terrible. We have uh, just dropped anchor, decided we don't need to be any more intelligent about our, you know, and of course we can't accept that, and so we started saying that there are biological scientific reasons for why we are predestined. Uh, that conclusive conclusion does not make any sense in the thriving of the species, in the sense that uh, nature and our design uh, or evolution and the way the, the species furthers itself certainly does not include um, a certain number of people optimally fulfilling their, exist their existence, optimally fulfilling their lives, which means coming into existence, with through the complementation of the same gender, we don't see this nowhere in nature. We see that uh, animals, uh, you know, hang out sexually with others of the same gender, and we ourselves may be comfortable. Um, there's bisexual men across different cultures that have done it with guys, and still they were man's man with with their woman, and they never. Uh, you know, they had another expression of this. We had this thing where we had to resolve it quickly and sternly, and we decided, and then after we decided, after we split that you're born or not born, then we had to back it up. And so now you listen to people, like to people that, Stephen is his name, this, the, 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 the Canadian guy that interviews people at college, and you hear to some, you hear some of the things that these people explain and I'm familiar with them because I've been hearing them for years and sometimes you just can't believe that they hear their own voices and they believe what they're saying it's unbelievable but we needed to back up this um, this conclusion with uh, scientific uh, sounding explanations to the point that we are now saying that uh, we have pushed it and we have derailed so badly that we're now saying that nine-year-olds uh, may know that they were born, meant to be born the opposite gender, which, which is so obviously created by society's talk and influence or um, things that they see, they hear people talk or 
they hear on TV and then they, they come up with the idea because they're always testing, they're always bouncing things off their parents and all you need is a parent that believes this social hype for them to encourage them even more and before you know it the parent and the child are talking about when the kid is going to be surgically altered and condemned to a life of uh, hormone therapy can you believe that it's it's unbelievable that we have gotten to this uh, over there uh, to this um, to this place uh, but instead, uh, if we realize that we're not separated, that we are men and women, and then our sexuality is apparent, obviously very strongly, impactfully affected by our development, how we are treated in society, by our family, by our parents. Uh, the, and then there's also there's uh, some studies that show that it seems that... Um, chemical environment and the mother uh, during gestation period others other studies that talk about if the mother seems very angry and uh, doesn't love her husband and is always you know this or whatever happens it seems to get transmitted into hormonal production or also uh, another study talks about the youngest of a string of boys will tend to now these to me all have to do with what I was saying of something a uh, constitution in the brain that will be more prone to being affected in other words in another society in another culture may simply produce men that are just not so eager to make lots of babies uh, not so eager to be sexual they're softer, gentler. They're more about getting along with other people, getting along with, with women and men. You know, the, the, the pre-birth factors that sometimes are used to say that a man or a woman was meant to be born gay, or, are probably would, in a in a better understanding, in a more sophisticated understanding of them, would perhaps speak of, uh a different character of, of a person coming through. but still a man though still you know it's just a, expressing their manhood differently um, and this would be possible if we came to understand homosexuality as something that occurs to human sexuality and we start understanding uh, the number the intensity the, the the amount of its occurrence by the social influence social psychological cultural chemical uh, and biological perhaps uh, predispositions to be affected a certain way by this this or that which is the center it's not either for or against it's understanding the species and that's what we should be aiming for as in everything understanding ourselves as a species um, understanding um, in everything and in, 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 in dealing with other countries putting ourselves in, in the importance of, of of another country's necessity to build their self-worth instead of objectifying and seeing what we can do to them what they what we need to you know uh, how we need to treat them um, everything um, People don't want to kill, they don't want to rob in the most sourceful of origins. We want to integrate and to be part of the collective means we don't harm each other. This is, this comes before anything. Whatever happens afterwards is, has happened because we were affected by things. So we should be responsible and accountable for the things that have affected our people, our citizens, to um, start behaving anti-collective, anti-society, anti-respect or appreciation, which is really what it's about. It's not appreciating your fellow man's life. And uh, you usually have problems even understanding what happened to you, so naturally you'll go and rob or kill or whatever. And so if uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the sad irony about how we have gone about creating nations in the world, we create a judicial system of laws to take care of society, to um, keep society safe, 
if it was truly intelligent, again, it would be at the middle understanding what happens to the species, what happens to the individual, given this world that it grows up in, given what can happen to this body, to this mind, uh, put in certain circumstances or under certain treatment, affected by whatever situations, and then deal with recuperating and healing that person. I'm saying that we will not take a long time to perfect uh, that wiser approach of truly loving and healing the species, and we still may not have, for many generations, spillouts of... But we still have them today. We've been having hanging people, locking up people for life, killing them, uh, police cars fill the streets, keeping everybody walking straight and intimidated. And do you see the society getting any better? Do you see people like... Treat, no, we're treating each other more coldly, more inhumanly, and we're still robbing and killing. So at some point, <laughs> humanity has to say, wait, stop, stop. And, and, and let's reinvent this, because we've got to find the right way of designing civilization. Thanks for listening.